Okay, um, what I'm wanting to do today is show y'all how to make a DNA model from a cardboard tube um, that will show the double helix and have all the stuff labeled. Um, as a biology teacher, I've signed kids to make models of DNA uh, every year, and I get some pretty good ones. This is an okay one. Um, I get a lot of really good ones. This was a really good one I had in the past. And you can see each of the parts are there and I've got each of my things there. The problem with that is a lot of kids, they can't afford the uh, styrofoam balls and things that go with it. So I needed to make a simpler one. And what we're gonna use today is a cardboard paper towel tube. This is what you get out of uh, your regular old paper towels. You'll need a manila folder just like this that you put files in. If you don't have a manila folder, you can use a cereal box. This is just a thin form of cardboard. That's what you're looking for. If you use a cereal box, you're going to have to paint over the, the parking on the outside. So um, get that. So you'll need that, a glue stick, or double-sided tape. I'm going to use double-sided tape because it's going to be easier today. You'll need uh, different markers, different colored markers. I've got for today uh, orange, blue, green, red, brown, purple, and a black. Your black, you can use a Sharpie, you can use a Crayola one, but your black is going to be used for outlining and labeling each of your things. Um, what you want to do first to get started is get everything laid out and get everything there, have a quiet place, a place where you can work. And then the first thing we're going to do is set up our um, nitrogen bases. What you're going to use is a uh, metric ruler. I'm going to use a Sharpie so it's easier for y'all to see. What I'm going to do is set up a uh, 10 centimeter box. I'm just going to make a line from 1 to 10 and then I'm going to make it 20 centimeters high and it'll give us a long rectangle just like that. Now once we've got that done with our ruler, we want to put a mark at five centimeters on either side there. And then make a vertical line right down at that five centimeter section. This is going to form the hydrogen bonds that are going to be the, be, between the two parts of our bases. Then we need to make a one centimeter mark from the edge of both sides. These are going to be the tabs that we're actually going to glue down or in this case tape down um, to our backbone of our model. So I'm just going to make another line here and another line here. So these are going to be our tabs. Our bases are going to be right here in the middle. Now once we've got done uh, with that, every two centimeters Here's one, I know you can't see it, so here's one, here's two, I'm going to make a line. So each of our bases is going to be two centimeters wide. And I go all the way up to 20, and I'm going to do that on the other side. Now. Once we've got that done, we're going to go ahead and draw lines in between each one. Now this will give us 10 base pairs that are going to make up the center of our model. Now, once you've got this done, all you have to do is go ahead and write in your base pairs, whatever they want to be. Uh, just remember A always pairs with T, C always pairs with, I don't like that, a G, and so on. And you're just going to alternate them going down your paper just like this and flip, flip them up so it makes it a little different. Once you finish, you'll have a piece that looks like this. 
It's just a little sheet card. You've got your tabs. You want to do both sides the same way. This one's in pencil, that's why it's not as bright. But you want to have both sides and make sure if you got A and a T on this side, you have the A and the T on the opposite side so they can show up. If you're in an honors class or you, your teacher wants to show you the difference between purines and pyrimidines, if you see how on this one, see how my hydrogen bond line alternates to represent my purines and pyrimidines, look and see which base is a purine, which was a pyrimidine, and I'll just stagger your line going down on, again on both sides. Now, once you're done, what you want to do is go ahead, and I'm going to use this one for, since it's colored, go ahead and give each base pair a particular color. I had adenine was orange, thymine is blue, cytosine green, guanine is purple. And I'm going to go ahead and color just a few of these so you can see. And I just streak it on there. Again, I do all, if I do markers, I'm going to go all in one direction so it makes it solid and it looks nice. If you use um, colored pencils, again, uh, you got to be careful that it doesn't look bad. Markers use markers work a little bit better, um, just because they're more um, they cover more and we can get that brighter color. So I've got those colored. I'm gonna do one more. So now I would repeat that process all the way down my card, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'll let you do that. Once you've colored your card all the way down and on both sides, always remember you got to do both sides. I'm only going to do one side in the sake of time. We want to cut and separate our base pairs. Do not cut along the center line. Only cut and separate our base pairs. Now, once you've got your base pairs cut up, you need to go ahead and fold the tabs on them. Now, I always fold the ones on the right back and the fold the tabs on the left front. So it'll give this kind of alternating view of that tab and it'll actually cause it to sit up just like that. So again, the folds and the ones on the right, I'm gonna fold back. Left, I'm gonna fold forward. And I'm going to do that for all of my base pairs. These are going to make up the center of our DNA model or the rungs of the DNA ladder, however your teacher um, taught you. But these will make up the center part of it. Again, make sure you've got them both tabs folded in either direction and that they're consistent with all of your tabs. Okay, so I've got my base pairs sitting there. Now, once I've got my base pairs set up, I need to go ahead and start with my paper towel roll. Now, I've drawn a line with Sharpie on this to represent, this is the seam that holds this paper towel roll together. Every paper towel roll has them. You usually start right here at the middle and you'll see a little point. That's where you want to start cutting and you're going to cut along that central seam all the way up to the end. And what you'll end up with is a paper towel roll that looks like this. It's one long thick piece. Okay. Now we're not done yet. We still have to cut this in half and then another thing in half. What I've done is I flatten it out, then use a ruler to cut it in half. Okay, and just cut that right in half. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you now. Now you'll find that the more you work with a paper towel roll and the more you cut it and the more you flatten it out, the more it tends to flatten out. So you have to be really careful to make sure that you're always kind of recoiling this paper towel so it doesn't lose this shape. So now I've got two pieces. This is still a little bit too big for what I want our model to look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these, put it to the side. That way if we mess up, it's no big deal. We've got another one. And we want to take this flat one, flatten it out. And again with our Sharpie, 
we're going to make another line right down the middle. Now, if, if I was you, I would definitely measure the exact center. Since I'm pushed for time, I'm just going to eyeball it. And I cut it right down my line right down the middle. And I'm going to begin to cut. This is going to make the sugar phosphate backbone of our model. So these two together, when I hold them like that, they'll actually make the backbone of our model. Now, again, once you've got them there, you might want to have to twist them up a little bit just so they every periodically twist them up so they can keep that shape on both sides. Once we've got this done, once you've got this done, you're ready to twist. Um, what I do is you see how there's that point right there? I'm going to draw a line straight across of that point right like that I'm going to do the same thing on the other one this is going to be my starting point for both models now I'm going to use my ruler again I'm going to flatten it out and again about every two centimeters just like we did our bases I'm going to create a line these are going to represent the alternating uh, deoxyribose and phosphate groups that make up the backbone of our model. And I'm only going to do a few of them so that way y'all can see. Again, once I'm done, I'm just going to create a box. Just draw a line through my mark. Just like that. Okay. Now, of course, I would do the entire strip, but for time, I'm only going to do a few. Once you've got that done, go back and draw a S and a P and alternate S and P. S, of course, stands for the sugar. P stands for the phosphate group. And I'm going to alternate these going all the way down each side of it. So once you're there, it'll look like that going all the way down the whole side. Again, I'm not going to do all of it, and I would want to do the same thing for this side. But for time interest, I'm only going to do this one. I'm going to do a couple of real short ones right here. I'm going to eyeball it again just so you'll be able to see what sort of the finished one will look at. So again. And we're just going to alternate sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. You want to measure them on both sides because your teacher was probably going to be grading you on whether or not your base pairs are lined up with the sugars and phosphates, everything correct. So you want to do that. So I have got my bases. I've got the rungs of my base pairs. What I need to do is go ahead and color couple of colors that will work better especially since you're working with a paper towel tube I would use black or brown to represent the phosphates I'm gonna use brown because I use black for my marking red is gonna be used for my sugars so again all I do is just go in color I'm using marker because it it's a little easier on the cardboard and I make a red sugar then my phosphate's going to be brown. The brown is better than the black because you can still see the letters, the S and the P. Sorry. You can still see the S and the P that you wrote on there earlier when you did your model. So again, you can see how I've got alternating S's and P's. And I would continue coloring this down both sides. Now I'm just going to color a few. Uh, you heard the bell ring. So I'm running out, out of time. So once you've got all these colored, again kind of coil them up a little bit. You've got both sides colored. You'll see how they start to flatten out 
the more you get them wet with markers. So you need to keep coiling them back. Now you're ready to go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to connect our nitrogen bases to our sugar phosphate backbones. Now I'm going to use double sided tape. Um, if I was you and it's something you're going to give your teacher, I would use uh, glue. Glue will work just about as fast, but for me, I'm going to use the double sided tape. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of tape, stick it on my tab. This is where you would add glue. I'm going to take one of my bases. Now here's the problem is we've got a triangular looking square and a square base. So I've got to have my base almost at a 90 degree angle to my backbone. And I'm just going to hold it there. Now I'm going to take another piece of tape. You would take another piece of glue and put it on there. And now I'm going to take this one and tape it there. I'll go ahead and wrap my coils around. And as I repeat this process over and over again, it'll create a double helix. I always start with the same sugar or the same backbone and I always again make sure that your base pairs are aligned vertically. I try to line up the top corner and the bottom corner with the vertical part of my nitrogen base. Again, it'll keep going like this and you'll notice as you start lining them up it'll twist together if you get it to look like a uh, ladder uh, twisted ladder is good if it's a flat ladder we did something wrong you may need to go back and start over another one okay. but you can see right there how I've started to do that see how they've started to alternate and you can see how it started to twist. You're going to continue that process all the way down, alternating each one of these, so you'll end up with 10 base pairs. And so the final model will look something like this. So it's been colored, it's completely twisted, and everything's labeled. I used black right here, black and red on one backbone and gray and uh, brown and red on the other just to see how it would look. But you can see how it twists and it's perfect. There's one other thing you have to do and again don't forget about this. Take your index card again label everything on there. Mine's backwards but you have what each one is. You have that. Put your name, date, and period on the back. Then I would use a little bit of string I've got ribbon and what you want to do is just take a little bit of your tape, tape the ribbon to the back of your car, index card and then take another little bit of the tape and tape it to the very last base pair. So now if your teacher wants when you give her your project she wants to display it or hang it up in a room, it'll hang up on one end if I tie a ribbon on one end and then your key will hang from the bottom. And so you can hang these from the room and ceiling and they'll twist or do other stuff in the wind. So hopefully um, you really enjoyed this. Uh, if it works for you, uh, again, this is, it won't cost you anything but the cost of the markers and the tape. Uh, it's a really good project. Uh, if you like this, please, again, give me a comment. Let me know what school you came from and uh, if this helped you out. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks.